Hello, and welcome back to Class Culture. This is Vlogmas number 12. It's De December 12th, Saturday morning. I say, you know what? I'm up. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking in a calm voice because it's still early on the Pacific Coast. Yes. Merry Christmas season. Yes. You know, based on everything we're going through, we're going to be okay. And I love that picture that I have um, prior to me popping up here. That is um, little Caroline Kennedy in the White House. So we have good things that are going to be coming in the White House. And today's subject is about toys. Yes, holiday toys. So I will clean up the um, title. I like for these to be surprises. So you can come on over and enjoy the topic of Vlogmas. So basically what I'm going to do is just talk about the fact that um, Christmas is a beautiful holiday. It is uh, Something that you can just take to heart and you can look forward to every year. And every year, um, I used to buy sort of like memorial uh, things that would, you know, strike my uh, memory during each year. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, heirlooms. There we go. To help me memory memorize, good grief, <laughs> how I felt during that point in time. And I can look at these particular um, mementos and tell you a particular story based on it. And maybe that next year when I am settled in my new home, I will be able to physically show them to you while I'm unpacking. So I'm already ready for next year's Vlogmas, but um, in my mind. But yeah, I, I want people to pick toys that mean something and give toys that mean something. For instance, if it's a little fella or a little girl, make it something that when they first look at it, they go, wow, oh, oh you know, and, and not just some something that you picked up because you only had five minutes. No, make, make it count. Make it match the card. I'm going to put on Instagram, shh, keep it secret, what I'm going to give to my little fella. Because at these um, 
precious times at these ages it's good to imprint on their brain help them to grow to learn so maybe the gift you're giving has absolutely nothing to do with the christmas holiday but has to do with their brain development you know um buy a little tea cup set and, and teach a little girl manners and and sit down and be pleasant with them and have a pretend tea party you know put some a little you know a little juice in there and put a little cookie on the plate and sit down on the floor and have a little tea party so little things like that matter and that's what my mom did our her toys the things she um gave to me and were put under the tree by our santa claus matter and i can still remember each and every one of those particular toys that i'm talking about you got other things shirts and you know cute hats and you know silly disney toys and things like that but these other gifts is what i'm talking about you know gifts that'll spark their curiosity gifts that'll introduce them to science and technology a book is a gift okay so i titled this uh toys and joyce <laughs> toys and joyce and uh yeah that's it's it's a memory it's an imprint it's indelible it's in there it'll never go away and when you grow up you go oh wow she brought me my first book i remember it she loved me she wanted me to be you know um, worldly, well-rounded, introduce me maybe to my favorite author or poet or designer or painter or film director, you know, things like that. And those are the type of toys that matter. You know, don't go so commercial. And I didn't with my children. And, and I know they are better people for that to this day. You know, instead of mountains and mountains of plastic gifts where all your money went and you didn't feed them that well but you bought them this $500 gift it's crazy you know those are things they can earn on their own I gave them things that matter and I still have my heirlooms to this day and they can still look at something and go oh my god I, I remember that and I'm like yes okay so let's share some links this is basically gonna be link <laughs> um, I guess heavy on the links and then I'll do some visuals a matter of fact here I forgot to put that on here and I'm gonna put old-fashioned toys and we're gonna look at some uh, pictures old-fashioned and I forgot to pull it up sorry toys as I was giving my introduction how are you guys doing I'm doing great today we celebrate our party 1000 strong and growing we're almost gonna hit we might hit 1100 today yes and as soon as i get my community board oops i guess you guys will be able to follow those numbers i just took it down under my name because i didn't need it anymore and it was so gratifying just growing over here organically and that's what the season is about too it's about nature it's about organic it's about what happens on planet earth it's about the weather it's about you know nourishment and love so let's hit it okay whether you're religious or not that's it's not that's not the point and i hope everyone is getting that that's the extra that's the cherry on the top that's the frosting on that cookie and cake but we all have to love, we all have to nourish our soul and our mind and our flesh. We all have to feed our, ourselves. We all have to laugh, we all have to get along, we all have to sing and dance and be entertained. That's what holidays are for. In between the working hearts and the protections and the fighting and the survival, that's what it's for. And to me, toys and things and joys that you can gather that you can purchase that little, you know, knickknack, that little object da you can put on your desk or in your house can remind you of something. When you, you know how you travel and you get souvenirs, you get the little tiny Eiffel Tower where you know you purchased that in Paris. And every time you look at it, you feel good. 
It's a memento. That's the word. I think I said it before. It's early. Okay. <laughs> so let's start. All right. I'm getting my whole life doing this. These are the conversations I would have anyway. So guess what? My grands, my friends, my family, my class culture, Golden Hearts can come on here and click and go, yep. Nobody in my family is having this conversation, so I might as well come on over here and listen to Gigi Darling have it. Okay. I said it. <laughs> so the first thing, let's look at some toys together. And once you see these toys, you know exactly what I mean. It's, you're going to feel it. It's going to hit you. I don't care if you're 100 or 2. My grandbaby would see these uh, little, you know, tubes over here or rings and just go nuts and start throwing them all around because that's what two-year-olds do. I was a rocking chair girl, okay, from like two to four. I lived on that rocking hobby horse, whatever we called it. And my mom was like, oh, God, it was great because, you know, I was the youngest of seven Sometimes she had things to do and she wasn't really in the mood to entertain her little girl. She loved me very much, but she was like, oh, it was nice. You would just get on that thing and rock back and forth and sing and you would watch TV and you would play pretend with your dolls. I, I was just in love with that hobby horse, you guys. So look at these toys. Don't they bring back memories? I don't care how old you are. And uh, did Toys R Us go out of... It just breaks my heart. That's a tradition that I guess I'll never have to walk my grands into Toys R Us and buy toys. I found a really, really um, established uh, toy store in San Francisco. I might do a video from there. I'll do a sneak one and I'll upload it. Yeah, I won't tell them. I'll, I'll sneak and do it and just make it an upload. But yeah, uh, it's so sad. I I purposely go and patronize old toy stores. Just Google it and you'll be surprised. Some of those stores have been there since 1899, 1947, 1967. Go patronize them. Those are probably family owned establishes and they have the good stuff. Don't just go to Target, Walmart and uh, Macy's or wherever. Patronize your local small businesses, please, even during pandemic. It's important. But look at these toys. Jacks. Oh, my God. All my fam bam in um, Detroit, Michigan. Remember, we used to play jacks for hours and hours on the porch, on the ground, in the grass. I mean, we would have tournaments. And while we were playing, other people were watching us. So that's just good childhood development team. Good sportsmanship, skill, fun, thinking, planning. You know, we would have tournaments, for goodness sakes. You know, little robots. I am obsessed with toy robots, you guys. <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin. A Ruxpin. How do you say it? Ruxpin. I can't. Let me, let me click it. Is it going to have his name? Yep. Yeah, Teddy Ruxpin. My kids, I have a picture where they had a whole total fight within five minutes. We were like, that was a bad idea. So either we, we went and bought a new one or we got something the other one wanted and the fight was over. I mean, they were mad, <laughs> but we were all excited and they were mad. We were like, oop, that was a fail. But they loved him, but we only bought one. So that was a big mistake. <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin, oh my God. Blocks. You know what? I'm just gonna get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna with the words because we're we're teaching our little fellow words. You get the blocks. Buy some blocks. Okay, Jack in the Box. These are good old fashioned toys that actually had a purpose and a meaning. You could actually find out what these teach. Mm hmm. I have an old wooden horse from Germany. When we lived there, I have wooden cars. My my um kids are like, he is obsessed with this little car you brought him. And I'm like, really? They're like, yeah. 
and for my arts and farts friends i love graphics fairy okay let me see good old-fashioned wooden toys i remember i had this uh fisher price um cash register there's a whole industry in buying these collecting them and selling them i have no idea how much this is worth on the market but you can get lots of money. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at these. Look at the little phone. Oh, oh, my God. Look at this stuff. See, this is awesome sauce. And I get a memory from every, a good old-fashioned abacus. Okay. And reward kits. Yeah, like I bought him a little metal car and he's obsessed with it and this is um i gotta get him a dump truck gotta get him a dump truck not an old rusty one but uh, yeah i have that's gonna be oh shh, don't tell anybody that's gonna be one of his uh gifts because they requested it so that's what i'm gonna do and probably when he's about i don't know six or seven we'll get the choo-choo train you know good old-fashioned stuffed animals you know so just be mindful what you purchase because they are going to remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember when I was six, I got my first real bike, big boy bike, you know. Oh, yeah, everybody had a Mr. Potato Head. I know I did. There's Miss Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head. Shout out to Disney. I watch toys every Christmas, okay, because Andy got that's when he got his toy. Here we go. Baby, I would ride my hobby horse. It didn't look like that. Maybe I'll try to look for it every day. I think I wrote, yeah, as she said about six or seven, started getting raggedy. She said and they had to wean. I was mad when they got rid of it, but I, I grew up, you know. I am a paper doll girl. So I have old books I've collected over the years of paper dolls. And here's a paper doll coloring book. And see, all I did, you guys, was Google old-fashioned toys. And it's $5.99 at the bookshop. Okay? I still love to color. So, yeah, this is just good information. You know, I should put that on my Pinterest because I love toy robots. I do. Mm-hmm. A good old-fashioned spinning top. I like all toys, new and old, you know, and I get it. Sometimes I question, well, what is this about? Well, why, you know, I'm not mad at it. Some of it is like I'd never spend my money on it. Look, a good old fashioned slingshot. Okay, well, don't buy that for a little person, you know, maybe a 12 year old and then teach them. They might become an Olympian or something, not for bad, for good, for skill, you know, I never knew what the name of this, but I wasn't really good at it. The little toy in the ball thing. Now, you know, dolls are very important during toys. I was kind of growing up when Cabbage Patch dolls came along, and it was in between me growed up and me being a mom. So I re really wasn't into the Cabbage Patch dolls or the Care Bears my kids were more like the Ninja Turtle era, you know, and everything after that. And when they started doing action figures, you know, stuff like that. But like, yeah, I like, um, I like collecting some old fashioned things, but I, I never per let the kids play for it. Or, here we go. Here it is. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Mine was white. And it was akin to this. Yeah. Mine was all white. And baby, I would I would back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yay, yay, yay. I would read on it, eat on it, play with games. I mean, baby, you would think it was talking to me. But I loved my horse, baby. And shop Goodwill. You'll be surprised what you can find online now. Because everybody's do, going, what, digital. They're like, we ain't going out of business. Let's get on it. 
See, a lot of people poo-poo the internet and online businesses. But I'm so happy, and I, I, I am. I, I, I give myself some credit, uh huh, for going back to school and embracing digital. It's nothing wrong with it. When I can watch CNN and I see um, Don Lemon interviewing somebody out of their living room, I'm like, mm hmm, they got a set just like mine, and my set looks better than theirs. Yes, I said it. Oh, oh, okay. Look for that t-shirt in a video near you. All right, let me stop sharing. <laughs> See, it's already 20 minutes. I, yes. I love conversation. And I'm happy you guys are having fun too. <laughs> so what else do I want? History of Christmas toys. Okay, so the history of toys. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about toys and games. And then we're going to talk about the history of Christmas toys. So let's hit it. Now, my little fella is at the flashcard stage. So in the morning, well, it is morning. In a couple hours, I'm going to shoot this over to my daughter. Because I'm like, so many options. So I'm just going to send this to her. And as long as you got a computer, you're good. So this is also for people who are homeschooling. And that's who, that's everybody, I should say. Because it's pandemic. So this is a great website, Twinkle, pre-K, K, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, special ed, homeschool, world, world languages. I might click onto there. Okay. Y'all know I'm trying to teach myself French, French, French. Mm -hmm. What is this? ELL. Not sure. Christian education and home learning. So they got flashcards for the gods. Okay, you think of it, it's here. I, I'm not even going to go any farther, but yeah. Avatator, Avatator. You know it's early, and I my, my lips and tongues and jaw are so relaxed. That's the only way I can learn a different language and feel brave enough to speak it because I had to learn. I, I want to learn these different words. Avatar creator, teaching calendar. I mean, baby, drop some gold stars in the description box because this is the bomb.com website. Okay. So this would be really good for my here. Let's do pre-K. Arts and crafts, dramatic play. Oh, go away. We have uh, holidays. We have winter banners. I mean, this is even good for my arts and crafts family. Gingerbread man, free resources, veteran day. I mean, I'm not steam, stem, steam. What is steam? I don't know. I thought it was meant stem. But anyway, math, science, themes, classroom management. Dramatic play. Let's see what that is. Dramatic play. Mm-hmm. Okay. Community helpers. Because, you know, the little fella goes to the doctor and he sees nurses and he sees firemen and policemen and cars. So these would be good, huh? Oh, yeah, this is a good one. This is excellent. Okay. So, yeah, that, boom. Hmm. I'm almost sure I put that in the description box already. So, yeah, that, that's awesome sauce. All right. And I like the black skin. Okay. My daughter, before I share these next two, when she was a little girl, I think she was in third grade, and you know how you went to the teacher conferences, and when the parent, the teacher, uh, I could see her looking over us and just smiling and we we're just waiting our turn. And, you know, we sat down. It was our turn. And she says, I just want to um, compliment you too. We're like, oh, okay, thanks. They were like, no, no, no. We just want to compliment you. We were like, okay. And they pulled out the some drawings. You know how they keep a file and show you their progress. And Monique had made a picture of a little girl and she put brown skin on the little girl. 
And then the little girl next to her, I think she used the yellow crayon. And the little girl next to her, I think she used like the flesh color, you know. And they were like, this is advanced for her age. I said, really? They were like, yeah. I said, well, I, I teach my kids that the planet is diverse. I don't use those words when you're a little person. You know, everybody is a beautiful color. And when you teach a child that way, it you're the parent. It, no one can take that away from them. They'll know it's in it's wrong when someone tries to teach them hate or discrimination. They will stand up and go, nope, that's wrong. So that's what I'm talking about. When you get those that box of crayons, that first box of crayons, that's a Christmas gift in their Christmas stocking, and you teach them to draw a brown one, draw a uh, tan one, draw a yellow, draw a Caucasian one, Teach them that we are here together. So the teacher was just so impressed. We were like, okay, but you know, that was who we are. You know, it, it was no big deal to us, but you know, we felt proud. We we felt good. It was a good moment. And my son Marcus, he would he would draw, he would, he was so expressive in his drawings. I still have their drawings to this day, the good ones. I used to share them every month. Their grandparents got packages of things that I would just share. Whether they kept or not, it's it's up to them, but I would share everything. Because we were a military family, so we had to share. We had to love on our distant family. And I would give them the scribble papers, the letter papers, the A's and B papers, just so they could see their progress. And they were so proud. They could show that to their Friends, look at my grandson. Look at my granddaughter. See, we're supposed to share. You're not supposed to hide away. You're not supposed to be afraid of the meanies. No. The more meanie comes after the me, the more I'm going to be out and in front and in their face just so I can teach them too. Life is meant to live. Joys. Those are the joys of Deirdre's life. And nobody, nowhere will ever take that away from my family. We're not going to hide. We're not going to not use our names. We're not going to not show you our face. It's Christmas. If the Pope can get on national TV and say, bless you, planet Earth, I can get on my social medias and say, hey, you guys, how are you doing today? And not feel like I have to hide from anybody. No, it is the holiday. This is who I am. If you don't like it, click off. Don't watch. Okay. Yes. I am my family. My family are my seeds of life. No one can really threaten that. No one can really take that away. No one who has real sense or a mind would ever and could never hurt that. That's what the law is for. That's what karma is for. That's what your religion is for. Your spirituality is for. Take those bad thoughts and put them in the trash where they belong. Address them. Mm -hmm. Handle people. Mm -hmm. But do whatever the f you want to do with your social media. No one will stop me ever. Okay. And yeah, my appointment with the FBI is on Wednesday. Bloop. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the history of Christmas toys and their trends. See, because that's the purpose. Wasn't that his message? And I don't even care if you're an atheist. His name was Jesus. Jesus. Wasn't that his message? To be kind to one another. Get over it. You know, F off. Okay. Yeah, he was a cool dude. So look, there's the babies with the rings. This is a good website. It's called Christmas Love to Know. And let me highlight this. It all matters. It all ties together. One is not separate from the other. Don't let them fool you. That's what a con person does. That's what a grifter does. That's what a hater does. That's what a mental illness person does. That's what a stalker does. Nah, bull. Mm -mm. Not gonna happen, bull bull. Mm -mm. 
a history of Christmas toys. Giving gifts has been a human tradition since ancient times. So you're participating in a tradition. Ancient Romans exchanged gifts on New Year's Day to celebrate the winter solstice. Awesome. And it's the 21st of this year. The idea that gift giving is an expression of love and affection is generally thought to have been associated with the spread of Christianity. However, at the birth of Christ, the three wise men brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were like, basically they're saying, well, it's associated with it, but they would they were no toys. I get it. Frankincense and myrrh is about health, wellness. I still use essential oils to this day. Gold is what they could use to go buy things they needed. All right. And then I'll let you read the rest. The legend of Santa Claus began an important development in the history of Christmas and toys as Santa, because he was a saint. Saint Nicholas was a real person. I'll do a whole story on it became known as a kind protector of children. It became customary to give children small toys to celebrate the holiday. Dolls, blocks, stuffed animals, board games. We are a board game family. I hate the pandemic. <laughs> but anyway, um, in 1820, stores in the United States began to heavily advertise shopping. Because why? That helps their bottom line. Black Chris, Black Friday. After Thanksgiving, people would come by, buy toys to prepare for the holiday. In 1841, a shop in Philadelphia attracted thousands of parents and children by displaying a life-size model of Santa in its window. Just, I love looking at the windows in the uh, retail stores in San Francisco. I'm going to start posting more pictures as I get closer to the holidays for me. To me, it's still kind of early. I, I, I really, the spirit really hits me in about five, six days. The 20th, I'm, I'm full blown Christmas. Okay. Because I don't want to over, you know, do it. So children would come and watch it in the window. Shortly after stores began the tradition of hiring someone to dress up as Santa to ask children what gifts they hope to receive. So yes, please just just check this out. It's good information. And here are trends. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because I had graduated in 82 and, and my kids were born in 85. It was just, we just missed that cabbage patch thing. You know, it's cute, but it's, you know, it is what it is. So here they give dates. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. My daughter loved pound puppies. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm surprised they didn't mention a lot of the animation stuff, you know, Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. But yeah, this is, this is spot on. Let me write, let me write. <laughs> Since Christmas is a time of giving, there are a number of charitable organizations that help ensure low-income children have a special purpose to look forward to. And I'm going to do a whole show on that, about organizations that help. So, unfortunately, you know, we are, we're not as active outside, but you can still donate to a lot of these places. So that's why I, I think I'll do it in the next two videos where people, while, while you're out there shopping, or if you have, you bought way too many gifts and you have that extra toy, you, you can donate it. The Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, the U.S. Marines does that, Toys for Tots, Angel Trees. So, yeah. All right. Great website. All right, one more. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great subject. It's just not a, a silly child subject. It's a, a meaningful subject. Because I know I love all of my mementos and my heirlooms and all my, um, you know, 
decorations and all that good stuff. Sometimes an ornament can be a toy. So this is another good website, Mokomi Toys and Games. And you can get great ideas. And it's, uh, I don't know why that won't go away. But anyway, it talks about toys, jigsaw puzzles, Play-Doh, Slinky, Laser Guns, Barbie was my jam.com, Monopoly, you know. Then they have related articles. And then here, I'm going to click off here. Oops. Go away. Go away. Popular videos. So this is a fun site for kids. They need interaction. It's pandemic. This is a good page. It, it's safe. And that's another thing. Let children be children. Don't sexualize them. Don't play your loud, rap, disgusting, butt and, and, and tit music. So your young kids are hearing that. It's too, they're too young for that. Use some discretion. Let them enjoy being a child. Let them be fun and goofy as long as they can. You know, that's part of parenting, controlling what's happening within your four, four walls. So I'm just clicking as I'm, I'm speaking, just so you can see. It's very interactive. You know, we like rhyming over here. Okay. And then they have a parent's corner tab. So I'll definitely be, oops, hello. Oh, it's going to YouTube. Okay, let me stop. There was a parent cor a corner tab up there. But yeah, I'll definitely be sending these over to my family members because they're parents. And if it feels corny, that means it's good. If it feels nerdy, that means it's your brain is being exercised. Your brain is like, finally, you're paying attention to me. Yes, let's learn something new. So toys and joys can come in packages during Christmas and last all year long. And they will definitely definitely last all life long. Okay. So I appreciate you so much. See you later today for our party. Bye.